this is the model of the fourth ventricle these are the various component fourth ventricle is a uh, one of the ventricle that is the space within the brain which uh, carry the csf <clears throat> from lateral ventricle to the third ventricle then third to fourth ventricle and the fourth ventricle to the central canal of a spinal cord so it is a communicating channel it between in between the aqueduct of sylvius which is the csf chamber a narrow csf chamber in the uh, level of the midbrain and it is continuous below with the central canal of the lower part of the medulla oblongata and the spinal cord at the level of obex so this is the dorsal aspect which is for dorsal aspect of the pons and the medulla oblongata and this is the ventral aspect this is the pons and this is the medulla oblongata this dorsal aspect of the pons and the medulla oblongata forms the floor of the fourth ventricle where is the roof is formed by here is the roof roof is tent like this one this one and this one it is like this like this so roof this is the ventral aspect and this is the dorsal aspect of the roof which is tent like and here this is the chamber where the csf runs so this is the fourth ventricle it lies behind the pons and the upper part of the medulla oblongata which you can say the open part of the medulla oblongata and above this is the roof of the fourth ventricle which is facing towards the ventral aspect of the cerebellum this is the cerebellum this is the dorsal aspect of the cerebellum but this is the ventral aspect and ventral aspect is facing towards the dorsal aspect of the roof okay. now we will discuss one by one first roof roof of the fourth ventricle <coughs> it is the dorsal aspect of the roof and this is the ventral aspect of the roof which is towards the fourth ventricle now roof is tent like and clearly it is um, somewhat uh, quadrilateral and here is one triangle this is one triangle but they are running inferiorly forward and converging towards the midbrain this green color this is the which forms the superolateral margin of the roof of the fourth ventricle this is superior cerebellar peduncle which connects the cerebellum which connect the cerebellum to the midbrain now this fiber runs from here to here and in between the superior cerebellar peduncle this is the white fiber which is called superior medullary velum the one in the midline this is the dorsal aspect of the roof over the superior medullary velum then some fiber in the midline it give one appendages which is leaf like and called frenulum velai this is superior medullary velum which is which is made up of white fiber and this is frenulum velai which go up to the level of inferior colliculus there is a depression in between the inferior colliculus and it go up to there it goes up to there 
and this is the trochlear nerve. Trochlear nerve, it emerges from the midbrain at the level of inferior colliculus and it crosses to opposite side and then it goes anteriorly. So this is frenulum villi, this is the trochlear nerve, it go up to the depression of the inferior colliculus. Now what is this green one? This is the apex of the roof which is facing, here is, this is the ventral aspect of the cerebellum, this is the dorsal aspect here in yellow color but beneath this is the ventral aspect which is facing towards the roof in the middle this green one this is the vestigial nucleus and this the tip of the roof or you can say cone tip of the cone it is facing towards the vestigial nucleus so this is called vestigium okay now this is the and superior the superior medullary velum it is facing this red portion in the midline this is the vermis whole of this is vermis anteriorly this is superior vermis and inferiorly yeah superiorly there is superior vermis and inferior inferiorly this is inferior vermis in the superior vermis, this one is the lingula, which is in red color. And the inferior vermis in the midline, this is known as nodule in the blue color. So, lingula of the superior vermis is facing towards the superior medullary velum, like this. This is the cerebellum. Okay, now coming to the uh, the posterior part of the dorsal aspect of the roof. What we are seeing, the uh, inferolateral boundary is formed by the inferior cerebellar peduncle in black color. This one and this one, these are the inferior cerebellar peduncle. Inferior cerebellar peduncle connect the cerebellum with the medulla oblongata okay this is the inferior cerebellar peduncle which has got the inferolateral and the <coughs> superomedial part this is the inferolateral part and this is the superomedial part superomedial part is also known as juxtaform body and the inferior lateral part is also known as the this is restiform body and this is juxta restiform body okay now in the middle now this is the inferior lateral part which is formed by the inferior cerebellar peduncle and in between it is covered by the fold of pyometer and the pyometer this side <coughs> and here is the ependyma so ventrally ependyma which is facing towards the fourth ventricle in which the CSF running Ependyma. Ependyma. This is a columnar cell. Ependyma. Uh, like this. The. Like this. Okay. This is the cilia. And I mean, this is the long one is the cilia. And this is the microvilli, which is facing towards the lumen. This cilia propel the CSF within the ventricles and this microvilli help in the adsorption of CSF and this is one uh, ependymal cell 
and this is the tentacles which is going up to the astrocyte carrying the message of within the csf to the police station astrocyte is what the policeman okay and this is the nucleus and some part of the ependymal cell it changes it changes to form the tela curvidi tela curvidi is the uh, in which there is two fold of this is the suppose this is the ventricle this is the ependyma and outside this is the pyometer and this is the ventricular cavity in the ventricular cavity you are seeing that this is the tela curvidi tela curvidi in which there is there is a fissure from which the curvidal capillaries are going inside so there is a fissure through which this pyometer going inside so there is two fold of pyometer along with the this changed form of ependyma this orange uh, this purple color changed form so here is one fold here is the another fold this is the changed form of ependymal cell in the tela curvidi which help in the secretion secretion of the csf the formation of csf okay and curvidal plexus is what curvidal plexus when there are capillaries you can see red color which is going from this curvidal cleft going inside so capillaries plus two fold of this is pyometer two fold of pyometer you can see here two fold of pyometer as well as the changed form of ependymal lining this is ependyma this is normal ependymal cell but this this is changed and here it is intractal to make secretion csf secretion here is the microvilli for absorption this is for propulsion and this is for carrying masses tentacles but here it is specialized and tela curvidi is pyometer plus ependyma where is the curvidal plexus is tela curvidi plus curvidal capillary which is this one okay now concept is clear now we are what we are seeing that the the dorsal aspect of the roof this is the dorsal aspect of the roof of the fourth ventricle in which the inferolateral boundary is formed by the inferior cerebellar peduncle and in between this is uh, above it is lined by the pyometer and ventrally it is lined by the ependymal cell which synthesizes csf and there is one this is foramen foramen of mazandi in the mid line just above the inferolateral uh, you can say inferior tip this is the inferior tip and just above the inferior tip in the mid line this is the foramen of mazandi through which fourth ventricle here is a fourth ventricle fourth ventricle is connected to the cisterna magna here is the space created in between the cerebellum the ventral aspect of the cerebellum and the dorsal aspect of the roof of the fourth ventricle this is here is the space of the cisterna magna what happens the curvidal uh, you can say tela curvidi tela curvidi here it runs that is the ependymal inside and the pyometer then it goes up to the apex and then it returns back just like this this is the ependymal ependymal uh, yeah 
like the epidermal and the pyometal they are going this way and they are returning back like this now it is everted now the ependyma is outside and the pyometer is inside like this this space is the cisterna magna and here this one is that is the that is the pyometer and ependyma it is so but now this uh, tela corvidi it starts from the tela corvidi it starts from the inferior angle and it envelop the the dorsal aspect of the root of ventricle and going up to the apex down it is now it is returning back and now it in see the ventral aspect of the cerebellum and going up to the ventral aspect of cerebellum and below it is enveloping the dorsal aspect of the roof and the roof is like this and it also envelops the close part of the this is the in black color this is the close part of the medulla oblongata is like this this and envelops the and really it also envelops the close part of the medulla oblongata okay now we have seen that this is inferior cerebellar peduncle both side and in between this is the pyometer plus ependyma and there are this is the foramen of mesendi and in the midline and the this portion in between the two inferior cerebellar peduncle this is the inferior medullary velum which is formed by the pyometer plus ependyma now if inferior medullary velum is extending laterally and uh, it give recess that is the lateral recess this is one recess and this is another recess this one yeah this one okay so there is one foramen of mesendry and this lateral recess the opening is called the foramen of lasca okay through which the ventricular csf is coming to the subarachnoid space okay and what are this these two are the dorso lateral recess on the dorsal aspect and on the lateral side so dorso lateral recess which have got no defect in this the inferior angle has defect that's from an of lesendi the superiorly and the laterally there is lateral recess which has got defect that is called the foramen of lasca but these are the two recess dorsal lateral recess which has got no defect no aperture inside it okay now this is the dorsal aspect of the roof now coming to the ventral aspect what we are seeing the corvoidal capillaries are coming inside corvoidal capillaries this red one these are yeah this one coming through the foramen of mesendi and now it is going up to the at the uh, apex of the this dent like a structure apex and then it is going towards the lateral recess it is protruding out and now going um, this uh, opposite direction lateral uh, foramen of lasca then it is protruding out then going back to the apex and then exiting out through foramen of mesendi to form a later t this is the pattern in which the inferior medullary velum which contain the corvoidal plexus here the corvoidal plexus is formed by the corvoidal capillaries beneath the ependyma and the pyometer this is the pattern but in another case the pattern is like this that is ependyma outside pyometer and the corvoidal capillaries are coming inside the ventricle this is the pattern in third ventricle and the lateral ventricle but in the fourth ventricle 
the pattern is like this okay now coming to the ventral aspect of the roof this is the ventral aspect the superior cerebellar peduncle this is superior medullary velum in white these are the white matter and these are the choroidal uh, capillary okay and this is the dorsal aspect we have discussed now coming to the uh, one thing more that the uh, <coughs> the inferior this is it is related to the the posterior part of the roof the posterior half that is the inferior medullary velum that is the inferior cerebellar peduncle this middle is the inferior medullary velum it is facing towards this blue one blue part of the vermis that is the um, nodule in blue color so the inferior medullary velum faces the nodule of the which is situated uh, which is the part of the inferior vermis nodule of inferior vermis which is present on the ventral aspect of the cerebellum okay now coming to the floor of the fourth ventricle floor of the fourth ventricle it is like this the here is the midpoint where the this is the pons and below this is the medulla oblongata it is like a triangle above and triangle below and here is the intermediate zone in the pink color which is characterized by the presence of this black wire which is the stria medullaris stria medullaris is the contralateral fiber coming from the opposite side arcuate nucleus and going to the cerebellum through the inferior cerebellar peduncle this is the stria medullaris coming from the arcuate nucleus arcuate nucleus is the inferiorly displaced displaced nucleus pontis okay now the upper part the upper triangle here in the midline this is the median sulcus then there is an elevation both side this is the median eminence and again there is a depression this one and here also this is the sulcus limitans and after which there is also an elevation this green color this is the vestibular area this is the median eminence and what is this this is the facial colliculus which is at the level of the superior fovea sulcus limitans ever it presents a uh, defect that is called the superior fovea ever which this is the ever which there is locus carulus locus carulus is present on the floor of the fourth ventricle on the dorsal aspect of the pons which is the hub for the epinephrine formation or you can say adrenaline formation here yeah, the adrenaline formation occur and it is in, in blue color due to the presence of melanin and, and the melanin produced by the substantia ferruginosa okay now this is the facial colliculus how it is produced facial colliculus you can see it is uh, formed by the fiber the nerve fiber of the facial nucleus this is the internal genu across the abducens nucleus this is the abducens nucleus this is the facial nucleus the facial nerve is crossing is going back to the abducens nucleus to form the internal genu and i have made somewhat outside to show the clear picture and due to this internal genu there is an elevation on the floor of the fourth ventricle or you can say the dorsal aspect of the pons this is called the facial colliculus which is an oval elevation okay 
नाउ कमिंग टू द इंटर नाउ कमिंग टू द इंटरमीडिएट जोन दिस इन पिंक कलर दिस इज द इंटरमीडिएट जोन विच इज कैरेक्टराइज बाय द स्ट्रामेडलरीज हेयर दिस इज द अगेन मीडियम सेल्कस दिस इज द मीडियम एमिनियंस एंड दिस इज द वेस्टिबुलर एरिया नाउ बिलो दिस इज अगेन अ ट्रैंगल द एपेक्स इज फेसिंग डाउनवर्ड एंड द बेस इज अपवर्ड एंड हेयर द सल्कस लिमिटेंस सडनली कम मीडियली एंड डिवाइज द मीडियन एमिनेंस इंटू टू पार्ट एव दिस इज एव ट्रैंगल इन द ब्लू कलर डिफरेंट सेट्स ऑफ ब्लू दिस इज होल ऑफ दिस इज हाइपोग्लोसल ट्रैंगल एंड बिलो दिस इज द वैगल ट्रैंगल एंड दिस इज द फ्यूनिकुलस सेपरेंस फ्यूनिकुलस सेपरेंस नो दिस सल्कस लिमिटेंस इज जस्ट कम्स मीडियली एंड डिवाइड इन डिवाइड द मीडियन एमिनेंस इन टू टू पार्ट एव दिस इज द हाइपोग्लोसल ट्रैंगल एंड द बिलो दिस इज द वैगल ट्रैंगल ओके दिस हाइपोग्लोसल ट्रैंगल इट अगेन डिवाइड इन टू बाई एन ऑब्लिक रेज इन टू टू पार्ट द मीडियल दिस इज द वन एरिया एंड दिस इज द लैटरल एरिया मीडियल एरिया लाइज ओवर द हाइपोग्लोसल न्यूक्लियस एंड लैटरली दिस लाइज ओवर द पेरी हाइपोग्लोसल कम्प्लेक्स पेरी हाइपोग्लोसल कम्प्लेक्स इज फॉर्म बाय द थ्री न्यूक्लियस दैट इज द सबलिंगल न्यूक्लियस इंटरकैलेटस एंड द न्यूक्लियस प्री पॉजिटस इट इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द वेस्टिबुलो ऑकुलर रिफ्लेक्स now this what is vestibulo ocular reflex when there is a movement in our body there uh, at the same time there is in opposite direction the movement of our eyeball if uh, we turn our head towards the left side uh, then the at uh, the same amount there will be deviation of the eyeball towards the right side that is on the opposite direction this is called vestibulo ocular reflex which is governed by the peri hypoglossal complex the efferent is coming from the vestibular nuclei and then the uh, the afferent is coming from the vestibular nuclei and efferent is going to the abducens nuclei okay this is peri hypoglossal complex and this is the hypoglossal nucleus beneath which is lies uh, this is the hypoglossal triangle beneath which lies the hypoglossal nucleus which is sending their efferent fiber to the skeletal muscle of the tongue okay now this is vagal triangle it is again divided into two part by an oblique ridge which is known as the funicular separens in this in um, this uh, gray this gray paper this is the funicular separens this is the uh, ependymal thickening funicular separens which divides the vagal triangle the uh, this is above here lies beneath the dorsal nucleus of vagus uh, and the nucleus tractor solitarius dorsal nucleus of vagus they are sending efferent fiber to the smooth muscle and the glands of all the viscerals and the uh, and the nucleus tractor solitarius it receives the nucleus tractor solitarius again there are two type of nucleus in which there is general visceral afferent and the special visceral afferent a special visceral afferent receive the test fiber where is the general visceral afferent receive the um, fiber from the viscerals the ischemic pain and the distance pain of the distension of the viscerals okay uh, beneath this area Above the funicular separens, okay, and below the funicular separens, this is an this is the area in yellow green color. This one is the area prostema. This is the one of the circumventricular organ, area prostema, which senses and resulting to emesis. It is uh, beneath it which lies um, area prostema, the chemoreceptor trigger zone. which is, has connection with the autonomic center of the medulla oblongata which result into the reverse parastasis parastasis 
peristalsis reverse peristalsis of the GIT and resulting to the emesis if there is an innoxious uh, agent inside the CSF because it senses that okay the area prostrema and what is this green color this is the tinea this is green color this is the tinea this is the horizontal and this is the sloping this is the median part again sloping part and this is the horizontal part this limb is the open part of the medulla oblongata and the closed part of the medulla oblongata here this is the closed part of the medulla oblongata in which there is a three elevation on each side this is the median sulcus and this is the above this is the gracile tubercle this is the cuneate tubercle and this is the tuber cinereum gracile tubercle is due to the presence of the gracile nucleus cuneate tubercle is due to the presence of the cuneate nucleus beneath and this is the tuber cinereum due to the presence of a spinal nucleus of trigeminal okay and from where this uh, the sulcus limitans change its path and come medially there is this is the inferior fovea this in round this is the inferior fovea okay now everything is covered and this this uh, here is the obex from which the um, fourth ventricle is connected to the the central canal of the medulla oblongata and then central canal of the spinal cord so this is the floor of the fourth ventricle